And with us right now, we've got Ryan Inman. Ryan, you are the present financial planner with Physician Wealth Services, and you're a podcast host and the creator of financialresidency.com. Ryan, thank you so much for joining us. Josh, thanks for having me. This is going to be super fun. Full disclosure too, you and I are friends and we do business together. We do business together, we're friends. So yes, (laughs) disclosure, I'm a planner, so I like disclosures. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, so um, Ryan, listen, I'm just gonna start off this conversation by the, for the person who's listening to us, if I were to advise somebody on how to grow a business successfully today uh, and like, you know, identifying the niche, you know, you're really leveraging content, Ryan, the and the branding and everything. Ryan, it's what you're doing, textbook. Absolutely textbook, what Josh Ellich would recommend. So awesome. I'm just gonna start. So the one thing I want, I, the, the person who's listening, our, our friend that's listening in on our conversation, I want you to pull up two websites. You go to financialresidency.com for sure, go check that out because that's all of Ryan's content. And all of that content, Ryan, uh, is then financially supported by your business at physicianwealthservices.com. So we're gonna get into how those two work together and what you spend your day doing in order to have grown your practice to the level that you have. Uh, And we're gonna talk about like your audience, all that, which I just think is absolutely brilliant. Um, But, Obviously, this is something that you came into. And so uh, I understand, so your wife is a physician, right? Yeah, she's a pediatric pulmonologist and works uh, at the US Navy here in San Diego. Oh, nice, nice. nice. Yeah. Um, and so how did you, were you a CPA while she was in medical school or how did, give me the timeline. So we actually met freshman year of college when she mm-hmm. didn't want to go to medical school and then did the whole long distance thing. She lives, uh, she lived in KU lived in Kansas. She went to KU. Um, It's where she was born and raised. So that's where she went to med school. We did the whole long distance thing. And then I was working for another CFP, um, a small shop in Orange County. And then Mm. she ended up coming out for residency and traveling for fellowship. So I've been working in the industry since 2008 uh, and then essentially started my own practice uh, at the end of 2015, launching officially in uh, February of 2016. Um, with Physician Wealth Services. Well, that was kind of gutsy going on your own. What what precipitated that? Uh, so I, it, it's funny when I actually told my parents and family like, hey, I'm gonna launch this business. All of them were, oh, it's about time. Uh, <laughs> I was the it's first in your blood to, then. It is, I was the first one to graduate college actually on both sides of the family. Yet my family's extremely successful in their own niches and what they do, most of them are in real estate. Uh, so they were very excited that I was actually going to branch out and, you know, end up, you know, starting my own, my own firm, um, if, if you will. But, uh, and my wife finished training in 2017. So I, I launched essentially a year before she finished training. Yeah. And so what was your business plan at the beginning? Like, how, how were you going to grow this thing? Yeah, so everyone in our industry kind of has a a model that they follow. It's an assets under management model. It's start a business working for another small business and then kind of take some clients and and go off on your own or you just (laughs) become a a partner in that practice. And I did none of those things. And so uh, I had multiple people that were, you know, people I thought were mentors and, you know, great people that have been doing this a long time say, hey, this isn't going to work. And so I'm, but I'm like one of those hold my beer type person, like, let me go do this. So I I just said, look, I'm sick of working with people that have million dollar plus um, accounts, you know, they're pre-retirees or retirees. It's just, I've done that work long enough. I'm just not excited. It doesn't thrill me enough. Um, It's not what I want my ideal life to look like. So I decided that I was going to work with people that are in a similar situation than ourselves. So we were going to work with young physicians and basically everyone we work with is just finished training or they're about 10 years out, which means Mm. for the normal person, they're like between 30 and 40 years old. And so they're starting families. They're starting to accumulate, you know, their wealth. They usually have a ton of student debt. Our average client's got about 300,000 of student debt, um, which is a lot. Um, which they make good incomes, but they've got to figure out there's a real balancing act um, in there. And it's very, very unique to physicians. 
And so we're teaching cash flow and budgeting. We're going more in depth than what a typical planner would do. And it's not just about assets because I've, I've literally advised on like three times the amount of debt that I actually manage in terms of money because that's the life stage they're in, but it's what I love and enjoy. So Ryan, talk to me about the difference in, let's say that you were a certified financial planner and you just serve the general population. And yet, you know, you put a, sure you, you know, you built yourself a shed and you put your name out front and um, that's speaking tongue in cheek, because that's actually what you did. We'll talk about that in just a second. Yeah, you actually, your office is, you built a separate building in your backyard and it, you know, it's, it's a little bit bigger. It's a big shed, uh, I but calling it a building at first, but yeah, it's basically a shed in the backyard, but it's 10 feet by 12 feet by 10 feet tall. And it's got yeah. double and, you know, thick drywall and full electrical and stuff. Build it to be kind of like a podcast studio. <sighs> not only Man. do we work remotely with all of our physicians all across the nation, but my firm is remote. So all of the people that work with me, other planners and team members, they're all virtual as well. Oh, so what like a life comes in uh, to this, but well, it sounds awesome, except for it's hard to turn off. So I thought physically yeah. removing me out of the house would help, which it does. Uh, but most nights I venture back out and end up working later. And but. you have, you have kiddos as well. Is that right? Or I have a five and that's not my artwork in behind ah. us. So <laughs> I've got a five and a three year old uh, boy and, and girl. So, and then. You know, I do all the pickups and drop-offs and stuff. Yeah. So part of designing my own firm and going out was be, was really driven with them. Um, my job I was working at before, I was commuting seven miles, but it was an hour to an hour and 20 minute drive here in San Diego, oh. so it's, even though it's seven miles. So I just said, look, I want to do this. This is who I want to work with. And I want to prioritize the kids and been able to to kind of build that that life. Yeah. So Ryan, um, I, I started asking a different question, then I got distracted. But uh, the original That's question is, imagine if you're a certified financial planner and you're serving a very general audience. You're like, I just work with anybody, you know, as opposed to I work with physicians. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How does that impact your business? It's tough because you have to you have to really sit down and think, do I want a marketing niche or a true niche? A marketing niche would be, hey, I work with physicians, but if a small business owner or an engineer or a CPA said, hey, I'd like to work with you as a client, would I say yes? And if it's a true niche, you would say no. I say no to dentists and, and veterans. Wow. Like we are just MDs and DOs, that, and maybe you're married to an engineer or a CPA or a dentist, then that's totally fine. But we literally just work with physicians. That is our specialty. And I don't work with physicians that are in retirement. That is not for me. I don't, I don't like that type of planning. I really love the, the type of planning that we're doing now. So I would say to the person that's maybe listening, that's an advisor for everyone, is how can you be the best at everything? How could you really know what's going on with every client in every different type of industry? The answer is you can't. And so you can give really good advice, but you can't give the best advice. So in my opinion, I think everyone should have a true niche and not a marketing niche where you might say, hey, I work with a bunch of doctors and attorneys and dentists or whatever. Yeah. And then they get there and it's really only 30% of your book. Really, it's mm. 100% or... You know, give or take, I've got two family members that are not doctors. Uh, you know, it's my mom and my brother that work with us. So technically, I'm not a true 100% firm, but everyone else pretty much is a physician or married to one. So how do physicians respond to that? I, I think that they're used to that because with a physician, you would go to say, let's say your pediatrician, and they're going to say, hey, your kiddo's sick. They've got X, Y, Z, but I'm not the specialist in this. I'm going to refer you out to the cardiologist to run these tests or the endocrinologist to run those tests. They don't handle just everything. So any, like, even if you said, I'm going to kind of work with a certain population, you're still not going to be the expert in it. Whereas the true niche allows you to be that specialist. And most physicians, at least in my case, they appreciate and they understand the value that this is all we do. And so all of our process, our procedures, all of our deliverables, I don't, a normal financial planner will probably build a 40 or 50 page financial plan for someone that details everything else out, which is awesome. Usually it's information overload, but yeah. it's awesome. That's what people will get. Ours are delivered in a way that 
the physicians when they go meet with you, Josh, and they then walk out and they've got to write a note on your workup and what happened in your whole consult. They do it in what's called a SOAP note. Um, and that's the, how their acronym works. That's how we build our financial plan. So it's in a way that they even understand because they're doing it all day, every day. And we can only do that because we're a true niched firm because that's all we work with. And you couldn't possibly do that and know all the details if you were just marketing to someone or just a financial planner for everyone. Is it good for business to be niche, niched? Well, yeah, because then we get the exact referrals that we want. I don't have referrals of, hey, can you take care of my, you know, my mother's uh, best friend who, you know, is retired and has this, like, I can refer that out and I'm happy to do that. But everyone that we get referred to is the exact clientele that we want. And that's yeah. been amazing for us. It has to be really, it has to feel really good if I'm a physician and I'm sitting down with you and you're speaking my language. Like you get me. Like, and, and I know that, uh, you know, for example, um, you know, one of the, one thing recently that we needed was that we wanted an overhaul of, not an overhaul, we just, we wanted to, we wanted to do our sales pipeline, our CRM, which we use uh, Pipedrive for that. And so there are plenty of people that, you know, well, I do sales coaching and yeah, you know, I know about blah, 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 blah. I'm like, no, I, I want the best in the world at Pipedrive. Like I, you know, in terms of like setting up automations and that sort of like, I want to max this thing out. And so I paid a lot of money but I, you know, easily, like five times as much as I could have paid somebody else. But I got someone that's like, I know everything there is to know about this platform. And I'm so I'm going to help you set up all these shortcuts and help you leverage your time. Well, I think about that. So, so let's say it was an extra $400 that we invested in that. Uh, and I think about the time that we will save and maybe the additional closed sales that we'll get over the next six to 12 months, it's a no brainer. And and so similarly, that you're, what's that again? What's that along with potential mistakes that you're avoiding Oof. that could have happened with someone that wasn't as familiar with it. Do you yeah. path a little bit? Yeah, yeah. So so talk to me now about the, the, the relationship between financialresidency.com. Like when did that launch? Uh, did that come second after Physician Wealth Services? And, and how did the two work together? Yeah, it came about 18 months after. Um, so I was trying to figure out how I should market and what I should do. And I researched and looked at a lot of different things. And because a lot of our friends are physicians and they were asking questions, I just pulled them, pulled like, there's like 60 of them. And I just said, how do you get your financial information? Mm. Like, just tell me, right? And what is it that you wanna learn? And I took basically all their feedback and the majority of them wanted something that they could do on the go. And it was basically, they want to listen to podcasts. And I thought that was really unique and interesting. And there wasn't really much in the space there. So I created the podcast about 18 months after I launched the business. And uh, we're a little over two years in, like it was, I started October of 2017. And we're next month in, in February, gonna hit half a million downloads which wow. is to me crazy nice. considering that it's a very specific podcast. It yeah, is it, to help it's kind of niche. So it's not a general personal finance podcast where I'm competing with, you know, amazing shows like Stacking Benjamins or, you yeah. know, NPR type stuff. I, that's not the clientele. And what ends up happening is because I, I truly believe in giving everything you know away and helping people as much as you can that the people that listen to the podcast and go, this is great ideas and I would love to implement this, but I know myself and I just won't do it. I need help. And then they come to us. So there's really no sales pitch. Like I don't run ads really on the, on the podcast. It's just as best of information as I can actually give you. Sometimes I'll bring in a guest to talk about something that they might be an authority on that I know a little bit about, but I'm not the perfect expert in that. And so they can, you know, kind of broaden that, um, you know, thought process out. But usually what ends up happening is the people who aren't the DIYs that listen to this, they go, hmm, I'd like to, you know, really work with someone. And usually we're one of the advisors that they're going to interview at that point. Um, so the, the name of the podcast then, so someone can search for right now, it's just called Financial Residency, right? Yep. Financial Residency. 
And I love your, uh, how did you find, like, especially like the style that you have now with the, uh, the uh, comic, the comic book art. I'm such a nerd. Like, not only am I a money nerd, but I'm like a super Marvel and comic nerd. So I actually hired, I found him on Upwork. Yeah. Uh, his name's John. He does amazing work. And I'm pretty sure if anyone wants to hire him, he would love that. <laughs> uh, but he uh, essentially is a comic book artist. And I just say, here's what I'm looking for. Can you do this? And we've just, you know, built up a good rapport and a good working relationship. And so he does all of the custom images for all our blogs and our podcasts and all of that stuff. He's amazing. And so I'm kind of nerding out on that as well. And the redesign that is taking place right now is featuring a lot of his work and really Great. appreciative that I've found him and he's so talented. Yeah. Now, how do people go from financial residency to, I mean, what's their, what's their, what, do you have a call to action? How are you promoting financial wealth or do you really need to, or physician wealth? I mean, how do you, how yeah, do you so make I that do it, those connections? I do it very them? subtle because I, again, I don't want this to be a huge sales pitch because that's right. not what it's meant to be. I want to broaden the net and make sure I can help as many physicians as I possibly can. Yeah. But at the bottom of the page, it says essentially, hey, if you're looking to do this and you need some help, we might be a good fit. Click here to learn more. Yeah. Like it's at the bottom of in the footer above everything. And then um, in the upper right in our redesign, it'll just say work with us. But that's really it. There's no push. Everything else is there for them to understand, consume, try to help themselves out. The majority of people that hit that page are probably going to be DIY type people. And I'm totally fine with that. If I can help educate them and make sure that they're not doing, you know, really dumb things with their money, then I'm extremely happy. And the emails I get every week with how we've helped someone figure something out is worth it to me. Mm. So, uh, you know, here's the thing. One thing, I mean, obviously we don't want to, um, you know, we want to make it fairly easy for people to kind of connect the dots, but you know, I don't think we need to bludgeon people over the head. And I think if we treat our audiences like they're pretty smart, like, um, you know, in this they're podcast, I like some I, of the most brilliant people on the planet, right? Right. That have had They'll like figure out who you are, right? <laughs> put two and two together is the way I look at it. Yeah, if they if they like you, uh, they can track you down. They they can find out more information about you, and they'll 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 find out uh, exactly. You know, all they know is that I really like and trust this guy, and uh, and certainly I'm getting to the point now where I definitely have a need. Uh, and Ryan, well, where else would they go? They already have a relationship with you. So, uh, of course, you're going to be the one that they that they go to first. Well, and think about the podcast medium, right? We're in someone's ears, right? You put earbuds or headphones on, you're in their ears. There's nowhere else that that is actually going to occur. A blog post, they're skimming or Insta or Facebook. They just skim, right? They don't actually read. But in a podcast, you can actually get to know the person. So a lot of the prospective clients that reach out to us Usually they're like, well, I know so much about you. Why don't you just ask me questions? <laughs> because they know. And it's sometimes they're like kind of weirded out. Like, hey, I know about the house and how's the water heater situation. And I'm like, oh, that was horrible. Right. So I've already got some rapport with them because they tell stories and go through and give real examples of things that we've done right and things that we've done wrong or wish we've done better. So they're learning with us as well. All right, Ryan Inman, you are the president financial planner with Physician Wealth Services. That's at physicianwealthservices.com. And you are the creator and podcast host at financialresidency.com. Please go check out what Ryan does. And if all of your physician friends, make sure that they're subscribed to his podcast and they know about Ryan as well. Uh, Ryan, thank you so much. Hey, happy to be here. Thanks for having me. 